guys, Caleb with White Metal Games here, and we're back for another cheat code today. Um, I don't know if you ever run into this, but anytime we do a project, we always have a little leftover green stuff at the end. Sculpting is something that we have to commonly do, even if it's just for filling gaps. Um, you don't have to be a master sculptor uh, to understand the basics of how green stuff and two-part epoxy works. But oftentimes we'll um, use a little too much putty and we'll have a little bit left over. And me being uh, the kind of person I am, I always want to save money and I'm always looking for something to do with the putty. So I came across kind of a long-term solution for things to do with it, and I wanted to share a couple of them with you today. So in today's cheat code, we're gonna go over spare green stuff and what to do with it. Um, specifically, we're gonna do sandbags and rocks today. I'm sure there's lots of other ideas for things that could be done, but we're gonna show you how to easily build up a sandbag wall just like this. I'm um, really almost with no time and no effort on your part, and just uh, a few minutes every time you sculpt something. So um, to start off with, the tools you're going to need for this today are a few standard sculpting tools. So I just selected a few of these um, clay shapers, which you can get from a variety of sources and sites in different sizes, and a regular um, sculpting tool. You can see that ours are very, very well used because we use them on a regular basis. These clay shapers are a firm tip, not a soft tip, which I prefer for sculpting, and they will wear out over time. No matter how well you treat them, they will eventually. They're silicone, they will break down, um, but regardless of which, Invest in good tools because these will last you for years if you take good care of them. Next thing you're going to need is a two-part epoxy putty. Most people use green stuff these days, but I actually find that the green stuff is better for sculpting when you're going to be casting something out of it. Um, it's a softer epoxy, which is great. It means it takes detail well, but the downside to it is, is it never dries as hard as I would like it to. This is called Epoxy Sculpt, and it's from a place called Ave Studios. There's another version of this on the market called Magic Sculpt. And basically what it is, is it's a two-part modeling compound, not unlike green stuff. Um, you'll see that it comes in two different colors. For this one, we're using uh, gray, and, gray and yellow, basically. Um, and you mix the parts equally, just like you do with green stuff. But this stuff dries to a rock-hard finish. As you can see there, it's just nice and hard. It's not going anywhere. And so for long-term projects like this, I really like to do something a little bit harder. Green stuff is actually a lot more expensive too. So you're just getting way more volume um, per, for your money when you spend a little bit more up first and it'll last much, much longer. One thing people don't tell you is after you mix the putty together evenly, and you can tell that it's evenly when you don't see any more striations or marbling effect throughout this. So this isn't quite evenly mixed. We need to keep mixing it just a little bit longer. But once you get it fully mixed together, you really want to set it aside for a couple of minutes to allow it a second to harden. You don't generally want to use it as soon as it's mixed together. You want to give it just a second to kind of settle and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of, now that this is pretty nice and evenly settled, we're going to set this aside for just a minute or so while we think about the project. So, as we showed you in the start of the video, what we basically have here is an Imperial Guardsman in a heavy weapons platoon or squad. They've got kind of a, a small um, sandbag uh, buoy built up around them. And we really just do this by taking small bits of green stuff and building it up slowly over time. So what I'll do is I'll build up the wall in placement, much like this. And then later when I have a heavy weapons team that I need, I'll have this already ready and I'll just drop it down right into the middle there. I leave plenty of room on the sides and I even leave a, a small gap here for the gun barrel to fit through. Uh, so you can see here I've started one on this 60 millimeter round base. And all I'm really going to do is just kind of sausage out my green stuff until it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to cut small lengths of it. Um, roughly uh, maybe the size, uh, well I'll just show you. It's easier to show you than tell you. So maybe about this size. I'm gonna cut a couple of them out. Not too big. And it's okay if you get different sizes, a little bit of variation doesn't hurt. I kind of think of these as little pillows when I do it. It kind of has that little shape to it. So just to start, just begin by kind of arranging them in roughly the shape you want. Uh, it's okay to use your fingers for this. Yes, you are gonna get some of your fingerprints on these, but we're gonna smooth it out in the next portion so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to use a couple different sizes here, and I'm just going to roughly arrange them on the base in generally the pattern I want here. Just remember, all sandbags are are literally just bags of sand that have over time absorbed some water from the weather and from the elements. So they're going to be misshapen. To smooth it out a little bit, what we're going to use is a solvent compound. This is called Safety Solvent, also from Ave Studio. You can pick this up for, I think, about $30 for the, bear, for the bottle, and it'll actually last you quite a long time. Um, some people suggest using something like Vaseline. The reason I don't use Vaseline is because it has a really hard time washing off and paint won't adhere to it. 
So it's actually a lot harder to use at first. So what I do is I keep my safety solvent in a little bottle and I dip my tool into it and then I just start to apply it. And all I'm really trying to do is basically soften these up just a little bit. I'm going to use a large, wide, flat sculpting tool to start. And all I'm trying to do here is just flatten them out, get them a little more squarish. When, they have, when there's a place where they're joining together, I'm going to kind of separate that a bit. And then as I flatten it back out, they'll kind of naturally gel together. I like the flat tool for this because it, it has hard square edges and that allows me to achieve a more natural square shape. If I used a round tool, I would be getting a lot of round edges, which is not really what I want. When you think of like a sack of sand or a sack of flour, it's generally a rectangle shape. So this is about the shape I want. Now I've got essentially where I want to be with that. Now what I'm going to do is take a, uh, a bladed tool like this one, and this, it's not even particularly sharp. You really just need a flat bladed edge. And I'm just going to go down the side and I'm going to put one or two small seams. You can see there that I've got some of this safety solvent kind of building up there. That's okay. It's just going to kind of soften it up a little bit. So I'm just going to put a couple little seams down the sides of all of it. I don't know if the top camera can really see this. So we're just doing a little seam down the side. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be something to break up the flat surface. Um, and then if I like that, then I'll just leave it alone, and I may decide I want to just take the sculpting tool just once more, kind of smooth it out. And that's really it. So the, for the first line of sandbags, we've got these, these much thinner sandbags, except for this one thick one here. And that's okay, because you can imagine the ones on the bottom probably have been thinned out over time. And every time I have a little bit of green stuff left, I'll build up this row, until eventually I've got much, many, many more rows. And after you paint this up, it'll look natural, it'll gel together. So all of these little stains and stuff that are left over will completely disappear once we paint this up. Another thing you can do is sculpt rocks or texture. A lot of times people will use slate or whatever they like to build their rocks up. But whenever I have a character and I want to put them on a particular base, what I like to do is I like to build up kind of a rocky base. Um, and this is kind of a great project because you could, the more putty you use, the more rocks you can create. So all I'm going to do at the beginning is just take as much green stuff as I want and just kind of literally knead out little balls of rock or lead up just little balls everywhere I want. Um, now, when you think about rock on the side of a mountain, it normally has like irregular cuts where it's broken off, it's tumbled down, that kind of stuff. So we're going to basically create that again with our flat edge. So we're just going to start to create hard lines. It doesn't matter which direction we're really going at first, because all we're really trying to do is get nice hard edges so that it looks like uh, the way a broken off rock would look. And remember, when you paint it, a lot of the, the surrealism is going to come through when you actually paint it. So just painting it gray will, will lead a great effect to making people think that it's rock. And I want to break these up a little bit, so I'm going to kind of work my tool in there. I don't actually want them to be conjoined, because rocks would not be conjoined. Later, I can go in with a small ballast and kind of fill in these areas if I desire. Um, and that will allow it to sort of look like dirt has trickled down into there. So this doesn't have to be exact or perfect. All I really need are rough shapes. Make sure that I get away from any sort of fingerprint. Now on the sides here where it's naturally kind of rounded, I'm going to take my tool. And I'm just going to kind of cut out some hard edges. And I'm going to do that by pressing into it to create kind of, um, I guess, broken segments, if you will. And that's already starting to look like a rock, in my opinion, once you put some great gray paint on there, you really won't have to worry about it too much. For a little variation, I'm going to take my tool and I'm just going to carve in some sort of scars or scratches into it. I'm going to go a little bit deeper than I normally would. And then I'm going to take the tool and kind of smooth them out just a little bit. And the result of that is going to be scratches that are duller. So it won't be as pronounced as it was before. So you can still see them in there. But they're not quite as, as hard or strong as they were before. I'm going to also go in here, do a couple more on the side. And again, I'll take the sculpting tool and just kind of smooth them out a little bit. And that's really about it. So now I've got a nice little pile of rocks. If I had a character, I could go ahead and mount him on top. Um, and once I paint that up and add some ballast in there, it'll be fine. So I like to build these up slowly over time as well. So then by the time I have a character model that I'm ready to put on it, I can just go ahead and grab him real quick, glue him down into place. And for even more variation, after this dries, you can take a, a pair of clippers, and you can kind of clip some of the hard edges here. 
Um, and what that will do is it'll make it look like make it look like the rock has been broken off slowly over time. And I can even do that right now if I really want to. I'll just sort of saw off a little piece right there. Get rid of that. And then just kind of smush that down a little bit to make it look like a hard edge. And I'll use my sculpting tool to smooth it out. And that's it. So if you have leftover green stuff at any point, there are lots of different things you can do with it. Don't throw it away. Um, even as it hardens, you can do something fun with it in preparation for future projects. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this cheat code. I hope this helps you to use some of your leftover green stuff. As always, check out our Patreon channel if you're viewing this on YouTube. It's Patreon slash White Metal Games. You can also check out all of our work on whitemetalgames.com. And if you're in the buying mood, we have lots of merch for sale on our website, including these dice, not guaranteed to roll sixes, and these tag templates, perfect for the new 8th edition of 40K. So that's it for me, and until next time, put your menus where your mouth is.